the sufficient optimality conditions are very similar to the necessary optimality conditions. Unlike in the previous video, we remind here classical results from analysis that are relevant in the context of optimization. The sufficient optimality conditions, which are denoted as theorem 5.7 in the book, says the following. Consider a point x star and a function f, which is twice differentiable. If the first derivative is equal to zero at x star, and if the second derivative is positive definite, which means that all its eigenvalues are strictly positive, these are sufficient condition for the fact that x star is a local minimum of the function f. In the last video, we used as an example fx equal x to the 3 in order to illustrate that the necessary conditions were not sufficient. Well, let's do the analysis again with this function. So we know that f prime of x is equal to 3x square f second of x is equal to 6, 6x. So if we take the point x star equal 0, we have that the first derivative is indeed equal to 0, and the second derivative is also equal to 0, so it means that it's not strictly positive. So the sufficient condition of optimality are not verified in this case. For the function x square, well, we can easily verify that in this case, it's verified. So we have, of course, f prime x equal to x, and f second x equals 2. So here we have f prime of 0, which is equal to 0, and f second of 0, which is equal to 2, which is strictly positive. So in this case, the sufficient conditions are verified, so we know that x equals 0 is a local minimum. Note that these conditions are not necessary. Let's take another example, which is f of x equals to x to the 4. Okay, so in this case, f prime is equal to 4x to the 3, and f second is equal to 12x square. So it means that f prime of 0 is equal to 0, so this is okay, but f second of 0 is also equal to 0, so it's not strictly positive. Okay, so the sufficient conditions are not necessary. Indeed, in this case, x equals 0 is a local minimum of the function. It is important to keep in mind that these conditions apply to local optima. We don't say anything about global optima. So let's look at the example on the left of this slide. This point here is a local optimum. And we can see that the gradient, which is the slope of the tangent, is equal to zero. And the second derivative, which is the curvature of the function at that point, is positive. Indeed, the, the function is convex at that point. Okay, so it's strictly positive. So the sufficient conditions are verified here. But obviously, this point here is a local optimum, but it's not a global optimum. Indeed, the, the function reaches values which are below the value of this point here here and here. So it's important to keep that in mind, that the, the conditions apply for local optima, not global optima. When the function is convex, like in the example here on the right, well, in this case, a local optimum is also a global optimum. In this case, this point here, it means that when we apply the optimality conditions for local optimum, they automatically apply for global optimum as well, because the function is convex. Now, this result is characterized by a theorem which is labeled 5.9 in the book, which says that if you take a function which is continuous and you consider a local minimum x star of this function, if the function is convex, then x star is also a global minimum of the function. And if the function happens to be strictly convex, then x star is the unique global minimum of f. Note that this result does not assume anything about differentiability, so this applies to any continuous function. For example, if we take this function, which is f of x equals the absolute value of x, in this case, the point x star equals zero is a local minimum, but it's also a global minimum because the function is convex. So the sufficient optimality conditions 
say that if the gradient is zero and the second derivative matrix is positive definite, which means that all eigenvalues are strictly positive, it means that the function is locally convex and we have a local minimum. If the function happens to be globally convex, convex everywhere, well, this local minimum happens to be also a global minimum. 